Yeah. Welcome back. AIG reporting better than expected fourth quarter earnings earlier this hour. Joining me now for more on those results is Robert Ben Moshe, the CEO of AIG. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you. So a year ago, you had Hurricane Sandy to grapple with. We did. Didn't have that in the fourth quarter, though we certainly have had some unusual weather. So what did that end up meaning for your results? Well, first of all, you can see year over result, year over year results are very strong. Uh, we had smaller catastrophes, natural catastrophes. However. We also are in the business of, of uh, insuring large buildings, large businesses. So our large losses were a little bit higher than normal. So while cats were down, large losses were up slightly. Why, Why was that? Well, just it's the way. The nature the way, of the business. The nature of the business. You know, all of a sudden uh, a plant will have an enormous fire and uh, you have to deal with those kinds of issues. I mean, that's why people have insurance. So uh, for us, it, it's a pattern over a four or five year period. You'll see it's pretty normal and you'll see some big events occur, but that's that's the, what AIG stands for. We stands for our ability to insure properties up to 1.5 billion. So uh, we could take some of those losses that could occur uh, under unusual circumstances, man-made, if you will, versus natural. And when it comes to natural, just to dwell on this for a moment, because we are in the middle of such an unusual weather pattern right now. I noticed that walking over. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, how are you guys modeling this? Is it is it changing the nature of the business? We are, we are looking at the normal industry models. Uh, which determine cats and locate and and what happens if there's a certain kind of event, which is your risk management. But we're also doing things in a very proprietary way. We're bringing our science group together, uh, working with our teams to think about how do we get a better insight as to what are the probabilities and what kinds of exposures you want to have under certain kinds of storms. So it's really the business of understanding exposures and what can happen if a category four comes through New York, but maybe close to the sea versus inland, uh, what that could mean in terms of losses. And I guess part of what I'm getting at, not to be political about it, but from a business point of view, is there climate change? I, I think there's a lot of talk about climate change. It doesn't feel like that way outside right now yeah. here in New York. Well, and maybe and, not warming, but certainly But change. things are changing. The world, the world is alive, and this is a changing planet. If you look at earthquakes and you look at the ring of fire, for example, there's a lot of things that are going on that can create changes in nature. Our job is to make sure we think about our risks, how much exposure we want to take in any one given area, and make sure we're being paid for that risk uh, so that we're comfortable that we're diversified, we're global, and so on. That says that we can afford to take a loss in one area versus another. It's really about risk diversification okay. and geographic diversification, not global warming. Okay, are you making, are you planning to make some other big deals? You guys are generating a lot more cash than you did a couple of years ago, obviously. And uh, you got a couple of choices about what to do with that, right? You can hang on to it, which to some extent regulators like to see. You can pay it back to shareholders. You can buy companies, especially maybe some of the bigger Asian companies that might give you more growth right. and exposure. Talk us through the way you're thinking about what to do. You, don't want, you want me to give you stock symbols, I hope. Yeah, a couple of, of stock picks. Yeah, you know, why don't we do that? That would be great on you're TV. Here. Why not? <laughs> uh, our first priority is to make sure that we focus on our credit ratings. And so it's important that we deal with our coverage ratios, we deal with enough liquidity and capital so that we are living up to the ratings that say we can live up to our guarantees. And uh, so that's first priority. The second priority is to focus on our shareholders. And what we said was we want to be balanced with some dividends so they get some cash back and also share buybacks. And so to the extent we have uh, an ability to take on a severe risk uh, and in terms of the happening in the markets as well as in the credit markets, equity markets, storms, and so on, that if we can stress this company for a really bad event, then we can be comfortable that there's excess cash that we can provide back to the shareholders. So it's finding the right balance. But if we can find a good business for the right price, remember, we're big. We're the largest insurance company in the world based on shareholder equity. Size is not a problem for us. So if we find a good economic transaction for AIG, we'll use that money to buy a company that is something that will allow us to grow a little bit more rapidly in some of the countries we're doing business with. But other than that, we, we will just focus on good credit ratings and then our shareholders. But if you're doing relatively better and generating cash and, and all of this and so forth and returning cash to shareholders, why, are, why also cut 3% of the workforce? I mean, what is that all about? That's it. First of all, we've been talking about moving to lower cost locations. Now, people say, well, that means you're moving offshore. Uh, that's not true. Uh, Amarillo, Texas is a wonderful location for us. 
Uh, Texas is still in the United States of America, uh, and it's a great. I'm not sure Rick Perry, you know. I understand that. Wants to talk about we're not, that. We're not going into, but it's, it's we're bringing some jobs to Amarillo from other locations. We bring jobs to Tennessee from other locations. So it's finding locations where we can get pools of talent, uh, lower cost. Uh, Olathe, Kansas, is another area we're bringing jobs to. Now, when you bring jobs from one area to another, high cost, low cost, uh, you have to have some duplication. And so we've done that in 2013. We've moved a lot of jobs to lower cost locations. And therefore, the jobs that were created are added. And now we have to begin to eliminate the jobs that have been replaced as we move them. So you have a lot of that going on right now. Is your workforce going to shrink or grow over time? And how much of this reflects technolog technological change? Well, it's a combination of technology. It's a combination of uh, making sure that we, we de-layer the company because we want to have less layers because we, people want to feel empowered and we feel we have too much bureaucracy. And the other part of it is, quite frankly, technology makes a big difference. And as we continue to invest a large amount of money in our technology plan, uh, for example, we had 12,500 servers in this company. We're going down to maybe two and a half to 3,000. Wow. So, so that, but we're bringing them into locations that are very secure. And so it's about hardening our environment, making sure that catastrophes can't hurt the ability of this firm and, uh, and to deliver on its uh, processing results. Uh, and so that's all part of the efficiency you'll see. You mentioned earlier what AIG stands for. And for a lot of Americans, it still stands for the villain at the height of the financial crisis, um, derivatives trades, other kinds of decisions that were made at the time. Uh, do you feel as though uh, it's, it's mission accomplished to some extent? I mean, what, what is AIG? What does it represent today? And do you, does AIG today pose any threat to the financial system? One, I don't believe it poses any threat to the financial system. Uh, it's an important part of the financial system. Uh, our data doesn't agree with you. Uh, we have seen that the public negative sentiment is down dramatically to levels lower than we've seen. Uh, and the positive is starting to move up because people realize that AIG paid back America plus a profit for about $205 billion. And many people thought AIG was finished. So we lived up to our promises to pay back America. In addition to that, we employ 30,000 plus people in America. These are jobs. And all the jobs we, we have here at AIG, we create many more thousands of jobs of people who do business with AIG. So when you talk to our risk managers, major corporations, remember we do business with 98% of the Fortune 500 in this country, 90%. But that's the problem, right? I mean, we're talking about this issue of too big or too interconnected to fail or what have you, and there's this sense that, well, for a company that important, we can't let it go down because think of the, the impact. We, first of all, our insurance companies didn't go down. Our insurance companies are very well regulated, and we are regulated to make sure that we can live up to our promises. And so I'm very comfortable with any insurance company out there making sure that, that if they fail, there's enough money and capital behind that company to live up to the promises made to the policyholders. But AIG is, is important, but, but it's not too big to fail. But I will tell you that we provide an enormous resource to the companies. Uh, people need our people. They need our problem solving. And so, so these companies are doing business with us, not because we're too big. It's because we're skilled in what we need to do. How safe is the U.S. financial system today? I, I think it's safer than we've ever imagined. I think the, uh, Ben Bernanke has done an outstanding job of, of taking us through this crisis. And if you look at this trust test that banks are dealing with, the deleveraging that's happened, uh, what's happened here at AIG, we're out of the financial products business and so on. This system has never been stronger in a long, long time. And I mean decades upon decades uh, of, of what's been happening here. Now, obviously, by being constrained, we're very safe, but we're not taking on enough risk to grow the economy, and that's not going to create jobs. So we're going to have to find the right balance in here, but I will tell you it's never been safer. Last question. You're one of the names on our list of CNBC's 25 most influential over the last uh, 25 years, in fact. and. I wonder who you would say has been influential enough to deserve a place on that list. Well, unfortunately, she's not alive, but I say my mother deserves a place on that list because she's done an outstanding job as a business person and teaching us values that make sense. But if we talk about other people in the business world, I would say that the chairman who just retired, the Federal Reserve, I think Ben Bernanke stood up, and what was most important is we needed somebody to make decisions in 08, however popular or unpopular and make sure that we continue to stay focused on keeping this economy from stalling. 
And I will tell you that, that unsung hero, uh, why did he do this, why did he do that? But the fact is that the financial system is as strong as it is today and is as vibrant as it is today. I think Ben Bernanke deserves an enormous amount of credit for just quietly taking the abuse and leading us to where we are today. We'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming by. That's CEO of AIG, Robert Ben Moshe. And we'll have more after the bell earnings and Wall Street reaction coming up.